Hey there, in today's video we're asking you, our YouTube community, to get involved. We're asking you to ask us any questions you've got on any aspect of mushroom growing. So if you'd like to get involved, then watch this video and find out how to take part. So here's the question from somebody posting as another yoga teacher and she's wondering how large the rooms need to be relative to one another. What are your thoughts there? Hey there, so today's video is slightly different from the ones we normally make and I hope that by now you've worked out that what really drives us here at Grow Cycle is to make sure that people like you get good quality information on growing mushrooms, whether you're starting out growing mushrooms or whether you're a more seasoned grower looking to improve on your yield, getting better crops, that sort of thing. This often happens in a question format where we answer people's questions in communities that we'd like to serve, like our online course community and our YouTube community. And we're answering questions every day in our course community, but we haven't had a chance to do it so much with YouTube. So what we'd like to do is to ask you to ask us whatever questions you have, and it's a really easy way you can go about doing that. Just drop a comment below this video with whatever question you have, and it can really be on any area of mushroom growing or related topics and we'll collate those questions over the next week, record a video answering them and post that back here in a couple of weeks time. So it's time for you to get your thinking cap on, try us out, ask us any question, whether you're just a beginning grower or whether you're a very seasoned mushroom producer. Give yep. it a go in the comment section below. Yeah, two weeks time, then you can check back here or if you're a subscriber to the channel, you'll get that notification straight away from YouTube with part two of this video. And in the meantime, let's kick things off with this question. So here's the question from somebody posting as another yoga teacher and she's wondering how large the rooms need to be relative to one another. What are your thoughts there? We do have a video that covers parts of this already and I'd recommend checking it out. It's a video on how to design a mushroom farm and in that we talk about the different spaces that you need and we discuss this rule of thumb which really relates quite well to growing oyster mushrooms that you tend to want your fruit room to be around about twice as big as your incubation room and the main reason for that is you're going to space your bags out more during the fruiting stage than you are during the incubation phase. So to be specific, um, and I'll give an example of a 50 kilograms a week uh, oyster mushroom farm. So for that sort of a farm, you're going to need minimum five meters squared for the uh, mixing and substrate preparation, another five meters squared for the incubation space, and at least 10 meters squared then for the fruiting room space. And that's going to give you a good amount of space uh, but that is the bare minimum. You're probably going to want some additional ancillary space for storing materials, uh, for working with your produce once you've harvested it. Now that's the simple answer to the question, but as with all these questions, there's a lot more to it. So um, Absolutely. what are your thoughts, Eric? Well, things like um, what type of method you use to grow, for instance, whether you use sterilization, super pasteurization or low-tech techniques, all have an influence on the size of room that you'll have as a mixing room or sterilization room. So the answer quickly gets more complicated than what Adam just used. The other thing that I wanted to point out is that the type of varieties that you'll be growing have an impact. For instance, shiitake has got a much longer incubation time, which means that you need to have more incubation room than, for instance, the oyster mushrooms. Absolutely, yeah. And like you said, the method of cultivation will massively influence specifically the production method, you know, where you're making your substrate. For example, if you're using sterile methods, then you're going to need a couple of different spaces. You're going to need a substrate preparation area where you maybe bag up your substrate. Then you're going to need a sterilization room where you're going to sterilize the substrate and inoculate it. Uh, that sort of space is going to look quite different than if you're using pasteurized substrate where uh, you know, it could be anything from an outside area where you're just going to soak some straw and inoculate it on a workbench. Uh, through to sort of an indoor area where maybe you're working with pellets and you're just sort of literally filling a bag and adding water. Um, so it really does differ quite a bit, as does the scale of your production. Obviously, um, the amount of space you need is relative to the level of production. So it could be anything from very small scale at home, which you can almost do in your kitchen mm -hmm. with a small fruit room out the side, um, to something where you're going to have a dedicated space for each part of the process and that will be directly proportionate really to the output. Absolutely, and then one more final thought that came to my mind is that it also depends on how you run your mushroom from a farm, of course, because plenty of commercial growers don't bother with the mixing incubation and they just buy the substrate into fruit in large fruiting rooms, and this might well suit your setup too. 
So you've seen how that works. If you have any questions similar to this, then do drop them in the comment section below. We'll then go away and record a load of detailed answers and we'll come back and share them with you in a couple of weeks time. Thanks for joining us today and we'll see you soon.